Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Adara Europis Synagogue. It was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. And did you know Creoles were first called Lasados in Cape Verde and West Africa? Dorothy Creole in New York, 1672. New Amsterdam, New York, 1664. Dutch West Indies Company flag. The Dutch West India Company was a chartered company of Dutch merchants as well as foreign investors. On the 3rd of June, 1621, it was granted a charter for a trade monopoly in the Dutch West Indies by the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands. In given jurisdiction over Dutch participation in the Atlantic slave trade, Brazil, the Caribbean, and North America. Headquarters of the Dutch West Indies Company, Amsterdam, 1665. Wealthy men from Amsterdam, Dutch Golden Age. New Amsterdam, also known as New York. New Amsterdam was a Dutch colony. Print advertising The Riches of New Amsterdam circa 1642 Also, The Enslaved of New York or New Amsterdam 1642 New Amsterdam was 
a Dutch colony. As Calvinist, the Dutch believed that their monetary wealth was proof that they were the elect, also known as those who were chosen by God and predestined for heaven. They also believed that the lack of wealth of the enslaved was proof that Africans were damned by God and predestined for hell. Therefore, the Dutch were not generally interested in sharing their church, their language, and their life ways with the enslaved peoples of African descent on their plantations. From the book, Creoles Revisited, Language Contact, Language Change, and Postcolonial Linguistics. The Israelite Hebrew Jew identity was known to the Dutch, Portuguese, Spanish, African, etc. slave traders. The slave traders all developed an ideology or reason why it was acceptable to enslave these people. With the Dutch Calvinist, they saw that the enslaved were destined for hell because proof or knowledge of being God's elect was wealth in which the enslaved lacked. So they had no reason to feel guilt or remorse. I suppose they didn't consider the wealth they stripped from the enslaved impoverished those people and at the same time made the Calvinists fabulously wealthy. When New York was called New Amsterdam, Enslaved blacks who did the bulk of this work were drawn from all corners of the Atlantic world. Simon Congo and Peter Santome each had a surname that indicated his place of birth, ancestry, and perhaps something about his physique. The rest of the first contingent included Anthony Portuguese, Manuel de Grit de Ruiz, Jean Francisco, and Jean Fort Orange, whose origin was most likely Fort Orange in Brazil or West Africa. Slavery in New York, Ira Berlin, page 31 to 32. Simon Congo from the Congo, Peter Saint Tome from Tome, Anthony Portuguese from Portugal, Manuel de Guerit de Ruiz from Ruiz, Spain. Dorothy Creole. Dorothy Creole was one of the first African women to arrive in New York. She arrived in 1627. That year, three enslaved African women set foot on the southern shore of Manhattan. Arriving in the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam, property of the Dutch West India Company, these women were brought to the colony to become the wives of enslaved African men who had arrived in 1625. One of these women were named Dorothy Creole, a surname that she 
acquired in the new world. Dorothy's world was one in which West Africans and Europeans had mixed and traded for more than two centuries. The Dutch had established trading posts in present-day Angola on the Slaven Coast or Slave Coast to acquire slaves for their New World colonies. It was also the year of the supposed sale of the island of Manhattan to the Dutch by native inhabitants for the equivalent of $24 of trade goods. What is significant to Dorothy Creel's story is that by 1625, New Amsterdam was a place where Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans had significant interaction. Dorothy Creole was given the surname Creole because she was a Creole, a descendant of those Jews thrown out of Portugal around 1492 and were called Lasados or the thrown out ones, Lasados. Subsequently, the Lanzados children were given the name or called their children Criollo, those who were raised in lands other than Portugal. For ours is not a conflict with a mere flesh and blood, but with the despotisms, the empires, the forces that control and govern this dark world, the spiritual host of evil arrayed against us in the heavenly warfare. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Life Stories Slavery in New York Dorothy Creole Slavery in New York Life Stories Profiles of Black New Yorkers During Slavery and Emancipation The Dutch Colonial Period 1627 to 1664 Dorothy Creole Dorothy Creole was one of the first black women in New Amsterdam. She was African, but she came from a world where West Africans and Europeans had been trading for two centuries and their cultures had mixed. She may have spoken Spanish or Portuguese in addition to her African language. The word Creole was often applied to people from this mixed world. Dorothy and other African women were brought to the colony because male slaves needed wives and Dutch women needed help keeping house. In those days, keeping house meant more than what we call housework today. Family survival depended on the work of women, cooking, growing a garden, preserving food, watching children, making warm clothes for winter, keeping the house 
cleaned laundry clean and taking care of people who were injured or sick. White women and black women may all have worked at these tasks, but female slaves almost surely did the hardest, riskiest, and dirtiest jobs. The Creoles, the so-called Africans of the Americas, Europeans, and Native Americans, and Native Africans, mixed, lived, and coexisted with each other for 200 years before Dorothy Creole's time. The fact that she was multilingual, she spoke Portuguese, Spanish, as well as African languages, is a testament of the world in which she lived in before arriving in New Amsterdam or New York. It was international in scope. That is why these people were called Atlantic Creoles. They were familiar with all lands of the Atlantic Ocean in Europe, Africa, or the Americas. The Creoles were the second people to become enslaved in the Americas. The Tainos of Espinola was first. The Creoles as enslaved people were labeled Negroes and free people of color. They intermixed so completely with the Indians of the Americas from the Dominica Republic, Haiti, Puerto Rico, Cuba, the West Indies, Mexico, Central and South America. They helped replenish and stop the diminishing of the indigenous of the Americas. It's impossible at this point to determine whose family line was originally Negro or Indian. North American Indians and Negroes were both on slave plantations in the Carolinas together. 